Good afternoon and welcome to today's video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the original equipment uh, in-car entertainment unit that was fitted to my Jaguar XJ40. This unit would have been fitted into the Sovereign version and also the Daimler versions. The version that my car originally had was um, a similar model but lower end. It didn't have a separate base and treble control and I think it was also lacking auto reverse and Dolby noise reduction. Now this particular item has Dolby noise reduction, auto reverse and a separate uh, balance uh, fader base and treble control. Now getting into it isn't too difficult. You've got uh, a few bolts securing the top cover and then you've got um, three bolts securing a heatsink onto those output transistors that you can see. They're the big uh, black block shaped things with some heat transfer paste on top of them. Now what I had symptoms wise was I've got no uh, output on all but one channel and I also had problems with the tape deck, basically the tape deck wasn't accepting the tape. So what I've done is I've um, actually stripped it down as far as the tape deck and actually lifted the deck up to have a look at the drive belt and noted that the drive belt is really slack and that is going to be something that um, I will be replacing at some point. But as a starter, I noted that there was a lot of uh, dry joints, especially around those output transistors, and also where that board meets the, uh, the bottom board, which sits underneath the unit. So it was a simple case of going over uh, the particular unit itself and just taking away those dry joints. So heating up the solder, sucking away the solder and replenishing it with fresh, uh, shiny solder just to make a better connection. Uh, you'll see sort of at the top of the picture there are six um, six solder points and those solder points connect to the main on-off combined on-off volume fader and balance switch. Now what I did with that switch is I used some uh, electrical contact cleaner and went over that switch with the contact cleaner. I also went over all of the boards again with the contact cleaner as I noted that there was quite a lot of that sort of brown resin like residue on the boards which um, from what I understand can sometimes become conductive so it was just a case of going over cleaning those boards off and mopping up any of the residue with a tissue just to make sure that everything was clean and uh, ready to go. Um, I also sort of took the time to go over a couple of other joints that I noted were dry jointed so it really was a case of just thoroughly going over the unit replacing any dry joints that I may have noticed. Now one thing um, I found was quite interesting was um, the tape deck itself. So the tape deck there is um, a mechanism which brings the whole transport close to the tape and both uh, capstans. So it basically takes the head down onto the tape along with the pinch rollers. Now that should happen when you put a tape in, it should automatically go into playback mode. So I'm trying to work out how that is actually activated, if it's via some kind of solenoid or if it's via a combination of the belt and the gearing bringing that down onto the board it's uh, down onto the tape itself as i said earlier the belt itself is really slack and it does need replacement so what i'm going to have to do is uh, get a new belt and replace that belt and see if that improves things if it doesn't um i'm reluctant to strip it down any further because the radio side of things does work so what I might be inclined to do is to somehow work out a way of soldering in some kind of um, aux input port which I can then situate somewhere outside of the head unit so that I can plug in an auxiliary input say like an iPod or some other MP3 playback device so I can obviously play back, um, play back music through the device I'm trying to work out how to do that. I don't know if it would be something I could do via the um, uh, the tape head or if there is another way I can break into 
uh, the unit and input into there. It's something I'll need to look into. Um, ideally, I would like to get the tape unit working so I can actually use my uh, collection of cassettes in this machine, mainly all sort of period stuff from the 1980s, which would be quite nice to uh, actually have. You know, you've got a period cassette player and you're playing period cassettes. It's always quite nice to have. Nice little feature. Um, the head unit itself, when I actually did get it working, um, was surprisingly good. So you'll notice to the top you've got that round connector. That's the main power supply connector. The square connector is all of the speakers and that black cable that sat underneath the square connector is an earthing connector that needs to earth onto the actual um, cassette deck itself. Uh, if that isn't present it will stop the unit from working. So what I did was I used a series of jumper cables and a 12 volt car battery charger and I was able to hook up the round connector to the negative terminals and the positive terminal of the battery charger because you've obviously got a permanent live and a switched live on that connector and what I did before doing any of this as you can see here was I took the uh, heat sink remounted it with uh, some new heat paste and put all four screws into the unit. And you'll see with a combination of those jumper cables that I've used there, I have actually been able to get the unit to work. So I had the radio and I had it coming out of both speakers. You'll also see that I'm using a um, Sade Diamond Life tape from 1984. It's like Sade's first album, if I recall. And you'll also have observed there that I had to manually push the uh, the tape head and pin rollers down onto the cassette. And after sort of half an hour of actually testing it with the cassette, it did seem to work rather well. I was able to get uh, quite a good sound out of the deck itself. Um, I was also able to get the sound uh, working on both what would be the front speakers and the rear speakers by just alternating the position of those little jumper cables. Um, so I was overall pleased with the result. The screws that go into the heat sink, the rear, the three which are towards the rear, one of those is underneath that yellow jumper cable, they would need to be taken out again when you're mounting the top plate back onto the unit because they actually make up part of the um, uh, attachment for the top cover. The bottom one stays where it is because there's like a, a larger hole in the actual top plate that accommodates that. And um, I would assume they are that way because the actual top plate itself um, is used as a further sort of heat spreader. So it effectively sort of has all the heat from those output transistors mounted across the entire, uh, the entire unit itself. To be honest with you, the heat sink itself does not actually get all that hot, um, which sort of may account for the fairly good condition of the internals in this machine. Um, a lot of the problems seem to be age-related. I mean, to be honest, I would expect dry joints at this age. I would expect the belt for the tape unit to be unbelievably slack. So a lot of it is all stuff that I'm not really um, overly concerned about. Uh, the next thing that I want to try is just removing that tape deck slightly, getting it up, lifted up high enough so I can fish the belt out of it and um, actually uh, get it all back together again. Um, if that isn't possible then I would like to see if there is a way I can splice in, as I say, um, a 3.5mm input jack so I could actually use the, uh, the machine's inputs facility perhaps going straight into the tape circuit where the head would have gone, um, possibly sort of arranging some kind of mechanism that would automatically switch it over to tape without me having to um, stick a tape in. Uh, all things for the future, hopefully those are just um, switched arrangements so I might be able to do it by the use of an external switch, who knows, certainly something worth looking into. Anyway. That is pretty much it for today's video. Um, this has been an interesting little project. I was uh, quite impressed with just how much uh, and how far I was able to get with just uh, a simple bit of soldering. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. 
and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. Thank you very much for watching.